dangerous. Have you ever met someone by the name of Kaedahara Kazuha? He carries a sword just like you. I've also heard that he possesses an animal vision. Why are you looking for him? That's none of your business. Why would such a dangerous individual be looking for me? Could it be someone you trained with under the same master? No. This puzzles me as much as it does you. I'm very sorry, but we cannot afford to pay what we owe right now. My husband has gone missing, and I'm still trying to find him. No, no. You misunderstand us. We are here to help with the investigation. We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Nagato's disappearance, if we may. Ah, I see. I thought the debt collectors had come to visit again. We find anything. Thank you so much. I just want him to come home. Based on the information we've gathered so far, I can only surmise that the sales meeting between the two men was somehow the catalyst for their disappearance. The fire at the warehouse likely played a part in how the situation unfolded. Though its exact role is a mystery, do you have any thoughts? Uh, um, well, Paimo was thinking that maybe someone accidentally knocked over an oil lamp and... Yeah, that's uh, where you can just stop. Nope, never mind. Paimon's brain needs to rest for a while. Over to you! We are still missing crucial information. Right, I very much agree with you. It seems highly likely that we're missing a piece of the puzzle. Working off what we know so far, there are too many things that don't add up. The chances are that there are still some clues left for us to discover. One fact that I keep coming back to is that Amenoma Yuya is polite and well-mannered, while Mr. Nagato is introverted and passive. Neither seems like the type of person who is inclined towards initiating conflict. Mr. Nagato, being heavily in debt, is also the only one of them with the potential motive to disappear after the fire. The more I ponder it, the more puzzling it becomes. Just what could have happened there? Hmm. This also doesn't seem connected to the case of the attacker. Right. Although the time frame seems to broadly match, no other details that we've learned seem to link the two events together. Amenoma Yuya lacks a key distinguishing feature of the attacker. Namely, that he is principally a practitioner of the blade testing techniques of Amenoma art, not those of the combat oriented Ishin art. Darn! We thought we could get two birds with one stone here, but at this rate, it's starting to look like a wild goose chase! Hmm. Let's keep going, since we've come this far. If we can solve the case, both Mr. Amenoma and Mrs. Nagato will be able to get some closure. Okay, but where should we go now? Let's head out of the city and check out the warehouse. There's still a chance we may be able to find some shreds of evidence. Not out there. Wait, I hear something ominous in the wind. Oh! This must be another one of those sounds that only you can hear. As sketchy as that whole thing seems, you did put it to good use when we were chasing down that vision thief at Beto's tournament, so... I knew we could count on you. Hmm. Now I'm picking up a strong scent in addition to the sound. It's right around here somewhere. But there's nothing here. It's gone now, but I can still sense the direction it left in. 
It felt very much like that ancient presence in Inazuma. The remnants of the Tatarigami. Tatarigami. That's one thing I didn't expect to encounter here. Indeed. But this unexpected spring of inauspicious energy may prove to be of benefit to our investigation. We should remain vigilant and approach slowly. Huh! So it's an underground warehouse! The force is definitely coming from down below. The source of the Tatarigami energy has long since left this place. But the residue it left behind still hasn't dissipated completely. Judging from the concentration, I would have to conclude that the Tatarigami source resided here for a very long time. Mrs. Nagato said her husband used to hang around the warehouse by himself a lot. It could well be that he was already under the influence of Tatarigami energy at that time. Surely someone would have noticed. From what I've been told, Tatarigami does not turn all upon whom it preys into violent monsters, but most will develop a stubborn streak upon being exposed to the Tatarigami's unfulfilled will. Their interests become fanatical obsessions. Mr. Nagato had an interest in collecting to begin with. The influence of Tatarigami could explain why he became an obsessive hoarder, amassing more and more possessions, even as he put himself in grave debt. Um, so what should we do now? Go down and take a look? Step back. I'll open the door and take a look inside. That's dangerous. If we don't open this door, we can move no closer to the truth. You needn't worry. Both of us have faced far greater dangers than this. Oh. What's down there? Everything's buried in debris. I can't see anything. It looks like the fire caused a cave-in, reducing the entire warehouse to rubble. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. That was too scary! Hyman was so sure that the warehouse boogeyman was about to jump out at us! Oh, uh, just stop talking. All we can do now is keep searching in the direction that the Tatarigami energy source left this place. Two ordinary humans, entangled with the Tatarigami. I fear much misfortune has already befallen them. We cannot afford to delay any longer. Yes, let's go. If nothing else, it's vital that we find out where this Tatarigami energy is coming from. Quiet your mind and focus on what you sense around you. Perhaps you too will perceive its ominous presence in the wind. You need to tap into the unclouded eye. Whoa. Hmm, listen how the music talks to you. This reminds me of the malice in Tales of Zestiria. But it also looks like Xiao's karma. And wounds. From this point, the trail appears to split into two. The main source of the Tatarigami energy continued on into the distance but a small portion remained here, and seems to be dissipating slowly. Two parts. So that would correspond to Mr. Nagato and Am Amanoa Yuya. <laughs> Quite possibly. Let's search the area. Whoa! Look at all those hilly turtles! They're acting really strangely! Something seems to be drawing their attention. Let's take a closer look. Oh shit. I never wish that didn't just happen. Like I didn't wish that happened either. By the looks of it, a letter. 
written on a piece of torn clothing. The ink is bone dry. It must have been written quite some time ago. Well, let's take a look. You know, this red dyed fabric probably also will unlock that one side quest I couldn't do. According to this letter, a conflict arose because Amenoma Yuya wanted to seize a blade belonging to Mr. Nagato. Yuya started the fire that destroyed the warehouse and wounded Mr. Nagato in the fight. Mr. Nagato kept chase as long as he could, eventually stopping here to write this letter when his strength gave out. So, where is he? He was not only mortally wounded, but also under the heavy influence of Tatarigami. Add to that the fact that its aura seems to have attracted a horde of monsters, and... I'm afraid he may no longer be with us. Whatever traces there may have been of his fate beyond after this point, they've since been disturbed by the hilly churls. There's nothing more for us to find here. Let's ask the Temyo Commission to do a thorough search later. There are more important things to do right now. Yes. Right now, we need to uncover some more important truths. If Amenoma Yuya is attacking other people indiscriminately, then the longer we take to find him, the more people risk meeting the same tragic end. Right! So let's get moving! How did it come to this? It's not in his nature. I wouldn't be surprised if he, too, fell prey to the influence of the Tatarigami. For a practitioner of the martial arts, the easiest desire to inflame would be their pursuit of further power and skill. All the clues that at first seemed disparate and disconnected. It seems that now we know the thread that runs between them. I have a hypothesis that, if it's correct, not only explains the series of events leading to the two men's disappearance, but also zeroes in on the attacker's identity. Wait! You figured it out, after all? I believe so. But it's something of an outlandish idea. I will only be able to confirm my suspicions once we've met him in person. On with the search. We must stay vigilant. At any point now, we may find ourselves in danger. seems to have stayed here for a long time. Why here? Is there anything special about this place? I'm not sure. But on closer examination, I sense that the aura may have lingered here at several different points in time. <laughs> Show yourself! It's no use hiding anymore! Man, it's almost different when Kazuha talks loud. Hmm. Haide Harakazua. It's you, at last. Aha! So it is the same guy from before! What's your problem, huh? What could you possibly have against Kazua? Indeed, there should be no enmity between us. If it is Amenoma Yuya that stands before us. But what if instead of facing Amenoma Yuya, we are in fact facing the blade in his hand? The blade? Now that you mention it, it is giving off a strange light. Whoa, whoa! Surely you don't mean... Are you serious? Tatarigami energy often lodges itself within physical objects, then works to subtly affect any living organisms in its vicinity. The blade has resided in Mr. Nagato's warehouse for many years, affecting his state of mind and more recently using the sail as a means to affect, or rather, as a means to occupy, Amenoma Yuya's body. Hmm. You're sharper than I thought. You've already deduced the truth of the matter. 
Many, many years ago, I was forged by a famed bladesmith of the Ishin tradition. I was his pride and joy. In me, he placed all his hopes and dreams. As a descendant of the Kaidahara clan, you should be able to guess our greatest regret. Indeed, at that point in time, he failed to live up to the Raiden Shogun's expectations. In the end, all he could do was to flee the nation by sea on a ship bound for Snezhnaya. He was a bladesmith of great renown, a master of his craft. There was nothing that he could not accomplish. All he needed was more time and a little faith. And sure enough, in the end, he achieved what he had set out to do. All of his life's work, his wisdom, his skill, it culminated in his creation of me. He not only bestowed upon me the greatest of strength, but also endowed me with a consciousness of my own. In her conceit, the Raiden Shogun lost not only the single most perfect blade in the entire world, but also an irreplaceable achievement in the art of blade forging. So... swords can become conscious and control people? The people of the time in which I was born never believed I had that kind of power. They saw me as a mere blade, a sharp and well-crafted one, but in all other respects an ordinary weapon. But that gave me the opportunity to take action. After the death of my creator, I decided to leave Snezhnaya and began my long quest to return to the distant land of Inazuma. Moving from one person to the next, I controlled the minds of countless hosts along the way, each bringing me one step closer to my ancestral home. I seek but one thing, to face the full force of the Raiden Shogun's blade and prove my power, the might of Isin art. Ah, so Amenoma Yuya was not your first victim. Tell me, what happens to those you've possessed when you've finished using them? My hosts? Who cares what happens to them? They are but tools that serve my mission. When they got tired, or injured, or unusable, I hopped to the next one in line. All I needed them for was to take me back to Inazuma. You're awful! After I returned to Inazuma, I decided to bide my time in Nagato's warehouse until Amenoma Yuya handed himself over to me on a silver platter. At long last, I'm approaching my journey's destination. By Amenoma Yuya's body, I have found you. And by your hand, I shall defeat the Raiden Shogun, Kaidehara Kazuha. You stood against the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. There can be no other to serve as my host for what is to come. Now, give your body over to me! Is he just gonna fly out of the sword? Join me and sever that divine life. The wind knows me. That hurts. Clouds high. The birds call. Whoa, why did Wumin get launched? Do not stand in my way, or I will strike you down too! Your bluff's fooling no one! You've lost! Lost? I can never lose. It is this body that has reached its limit, nothing more. Even if you defeat me here, the one who falls will not be me, but this man. He is but a puppet that can be replaced. I can take a new vessel at will. Then we'll smash you into pieces. The end result is the same! I will end this wretch's life before you can lift a finger! And even if I were to lose my physical form, it is but a small setback. My consciousness shall endure. By any means necessary, and any medium available, I shall return and fulfill my destiny! Your fighting style. It is indeed the forms of Ishin art, but from your movements, 
I sense only hatred and arrogance, as well as a thinly veiled mania and despair. Really? You can tell all that just from his moves? As I've mentioned before, the forms of Ishin art convey the user's thoughts and feelings. Since the blade is currently possessing Aminoma Yuya's body, its movements express the innermost thoughts of the blade. If you ask me, the mania is probably due to your desperate, single-minded ambition. You believe I am your only hope. Are you trying to claim that I am helpless without you? On his deathbed, he passed to me all of Ishin Art's secrets. The little that you know barely scratches the surface. In that regard, why would I ever need your help? Because all of that is in the past. I've been wondering why you've not caused more trouble in all the years you need a cursed blade that can possess its owner. Now that I've seen inside your mind, everything finally makes sense. You weren't biding your time. You were trapped. Hmm. After all the time that's passed, you have grown weak. To the point that you are now unable to acquire a new host without making physical contact. Oh, that's right! Paimon remembers now! Mr. Nagato had a habit of never touching his collectibles! Only when Mr. Nagato witnessed his wife's distress and decided to sell his collectibles, did you finally have an opportunity to reach out to Aminoma Yuya and make your escape. And what of it? Well, that brings me to my second point. There's a despair in you that is so strong it threatens to overwhelm you. You were determined to fulfill your maker's ambition whatever the cost. But this ambition is too grand, and too heavy for you to bear. Each step you have taken has come at a great cost. I think you realized your limitations long ago. The more you clenched your teeth and pressed forward, the greater your fear of losing everything you had achieved grew, and the more you wished to run from the truth. But the way I see it, what began as an ambition has long since become a delusional fantasy. What would you know about any of this? I'm just one step away from achieving my goal! You returned to Inazuma to prove the unparalleled brilliance of Ishin art. But to make this arduous journey, you committed countless atrocities and showed a blatant disregard for human life. Even if you were to sever that divine light, is this truly the outcome that your maker would have desired? You... Sure, you inherited the secrets of Ishin art. But even as you made your journey to honor this legacy, you treated the ones who wielded you as mere tools to do your bidding. How could you possibly unleash the full potential of Ishin art when you act in perfect discordance with the principle of harmony between a blade and its bearer? Silence, you blabbering fool! I must achieve my goal. This was his life's dream, and the very purpose for which I was brought into being! I will concede that you are most perceptive. You see my predicament clearly. But you also underestimate my resolve. And you should face reality. Easy for you to say. Facing reality offers me nothing. I have a way, not hesitation, not self-reflection, and certainly not your so-called reality. It is pointless to argue further, descendant of the Kaidahara clan. If you wish to save this man, then offer me your body in exchange. How stubbornly you stick to your wayward path. I do not believe for a second that you can challenge the almighty Shogun in your current state. So let us make a bet and I will put your strength to the test. What? Surely you're not planning to agree to his demands. Very well. Then find yourself some enemies with whom you wish to cross blades. A taste of my power will more than convince you. Once we have dealt with them, we shall proceed to Tenshukaku. And as for your end of the bargain, if you lose, you must release Amenoma Yuya from your control. I accept. This is a risky strategy. This is the only way to save Amenoma Yuya. If we don't do this, he'll forever be the Blade's puppet. The Cursed Blade's strength is currently very weak, and I sense he's hesitating. 
This suggests his heart is still not completely devoid of honor. The power of the Tatarigami lies in intensifying existing obsessions. This is the reason Mr. Nagato and Aminoma Yuya fell prey to it. Since I don't have any similar kinds of obsessions, I should be able to put up some resistance for a while. But even so... Even if things take a turn for the worse, I still have you both here with me. We have a chance here to save an innocent victim. I am willing to accept the risks entailed. It's not like I can stop you. Your disdain for me betrays your woeful ignorance. I agreed to this bet because there are things I wish to learn too. Now, take me in your hand. I'm okay. I felt a little dizzy at first, but only for a moment. It's all right. So far, this was as I expected. If something feels off, let us know immediately. I will. Thank you. What should we do next? And some enemies. Although this blade has endured much turmoil, it probably hasn't experienced many real fights. If a blade built for Ishin art cannot enter a state of harmony between blade and bearer, it cannot unleash its true power. If he wants to avoid reality, then we need to fight until he has no choice but to face it. He shouldn't last long in an intense combat situation. Wait a minute! Paimon remembers hearing about something from the Adventurers Guild. Since the Takasukasa clan abandoned that secret base, it's been held by Ronin ever since! That should fit the bill. Ah, huh. all right. Please lead the way. What about Aminoma Yuya? What should we do with him? The blade says he'll let Aminoma Yuya trail us silently. Although he hasn't regained his own consciousness yet, he is not in any immediate danger. Are we sure this is a good idea? It's a pretty treacherous journey. Okay, fine. Just be careful. Well, all right. Looks like this is the domain part of it. I don't know whether to go. I'll just climb. Definitely be it for me for the night. I don't know if I'll do any editing. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. So I'll probably eat. Get in there and finish this. Oh, only as Kazuha? Leave okay. everything on this journey to me. is performing largely as I expected. Having gone so long without proper use and maintenance, it's become very difficult to use. Though he's making every effort to persevere, I do not think he can last much longer. Hmm. Something else on your mind? How strange. 
Rather than trying to control me, he is instead trying to match my fighting rhythm. Let's keep going. Something's up with the blade. 